uh, we see that Estabrook Bay uh, has taken the rather brave step of taking sort of swinging cuts to the civil service. She says diversity jobs are going to be banned. I'm not sure. I wish her very well, and I hope that they get banned, and I hope that she rid, rids, the, rids us of the wokists. But it's quite a tough um, endeavour, isn't it? It's going to be something that she's going to find quite hard to do. Well, you know, I think um, you and I don't agree on this, really, because I don't think she should be doing it in the first place. All right. Why not? Well, I mean, she talks about um, this being politicisation of the civil service through the back door. But, you know, I think this is a political gesture. And actually, equality, diversity and inclusion matter. They matter because, uh, you know, you don't have, um, you can't work well unless you can work together. And it matters because our public services, which civil servants are delivering, also need to work for everybody, not just for you know, a particular group of the population. But can you point to any part of the civil service that works effectively at the moment? The Home Office certainly doesn't. Well, I can certainly point to parts of the civil service or rather government that haven't worked very well because of problems with equality. Um, you know, I'm thinking about Boris Johnson's number 10. During the COVID inquiry, you know, it was revealed that there was uh, there were terrible workplace relationships there. And, you know, everybody, including Dominic Cummings, who was perhaps one of the worst offenders, said they weren't sufficiently diverse. And so they were making some you know, some wrong decisions. And what would diversity uh, have changed about the decision making process? Sorry, how what, does it affect? Well, well no, what would di no, what would diversity have changed? I'm not quite sure what you mean by diversity. Well, oh, let me give you an example. Domestic abuse. Right. You know, one of the issues that they didn't think of early on is how lockdown would affect people, you know, locked in with domestic abusers. And it's, you know, it's a micro issue, but it's a massive issue if you happen to be in that situation. And, you know, as we know, COVID affected different ethnic minority groups differently. And so, there, you know, there were issues that... Well, know, there were issues around lockdown that they shouldn't have done at all. You know, but well, that's about common sense. It doesn't matter how many diverse people you've got in a room. Surely, if you've got enough sensible people in a room, uh, they can see things through all sorts of different lenses. Well, you know, I think that diversity actually helps helps people to think better. You know, people who think differently. Well, what do you mean by diversity exactly? Well, I mean diversity in, in its many manifestations. Like you know? what then? So, well, how should the, the makeup of the cabinet be different if it's not diverse enough, in your view? Well, I'm not. I'm not. You know, I'm not talking about the makeup of the cabinet is quite a diverse cabinet right. you know, and I think well government... why is it so useless then if diversity is a good thing well you know I think there's there's massive group thing you know you mentioned echo chambers earlier on and I think there's a you know and obviously you know people don't see the echo chambers they're in but I think they're in a big echo chamber and the whole war on woke which is not just Esther McVeigh talking about the civil service but it's a it's a much bigger issue, is really sort of swimming against the tide of, of history. You know, I can remember, I'm quite old, as you can imagine, um, you know, when people, so when people get married if they were gay. You know, now we're in a world where people can get married, if, 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 you know, when they're gay, and that's a good yeah, thing. But that does, well, it may well be a good thing for social uh, cohesion and all the rest of it, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have a certain number of gay people in a room when you're having a meeting about government policy, does it? It's about quotas. Equality, diversity and inclusion isn't about quotas. What is it's it about? about it's about avoiding groupthink. It's about getting the, you know, being representative of the population. If you're serving the population, then being representative of the population is good. But don't so you think? But don't you think? If you want to be, hang on. But if you want to be representative of the population, should you not also be representative of the proportions of that population? For example, an awful lot of the uh, civil service are technically, apparently, threatening to go on strike currently because they think the government has got a load of transphobic policies. Right now, one. I don't think the government has got any transphobic policies, which, but they would say, because they are infected with trans ideology, um, that saying a woman cannot have a penis is transphobic. I don't think it is. And then you start to get into ideas about inclusion concerning a very small proportion of the public. Well, the whole point about inclusion is that you know, there's a great deal of difference in the population and actually being aware of those differences and welcoming to people who have different ways of thinking, ways of being, is an important thing. And, um, you know, I think... Yes, but surely it should be proportionate as well, shouldn't it? I mean, for example, um, if you are going to start, you know, suspending people, as has happened in places like Westminster Council, because they have said certain things on social media that you don't agree with, right, that would not be called inclusivity. That would actually be called exclusivity, wouldn't it? 
Well, that's an example of why you need to think, you know, quite deeply about equality, diversity. And well, inclusion. no, but also surely equality, diversity, yeah. and inclusion means that you should, you should be able to have an opinion which does not lose you your job just because the group think of diversity doesn't allow it. Well, I certainly think that, uh, you know, tolerance and compassion are very important qualities. But look, just today in the, in the House of Commons, MPs, they're voting on an issue of sexual harassment, which is an EDI issue. You know, they're, 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 How is it an EDI issue? Because a sexual harassment is some is a barrier that stands in no, the way. No, it's a crime, sexual harassment. It's not an EDI but, so issue, is it? It's a crime, but it's also a barrier, isn't it? You know, there's lots of... You know, when I was... Um, and this may surprise you, Mike, when I was chief executive of the Equal Opportunities Commission, you know, 20 years ago, pretty much, uh, you know, we were working with the armed services because they had a major issue with sexual harassment which, you know, not it only is a crime, but it stops people from getting on in the workplace and yeah. it makes places very difficult places to live. Those same issues are still there today. You know, it really shocks me to well, see... So you failed then in your in your mission, didn't you? Well, no, what, what failed was the law. You know, the law itself is not sufficient. You need to create an environment, a cultural environment, in which people, everybody can thrive and those things are unacceptable. In the House of Commons today, they've watered down the requirements to ban people MPs who've been uh, alleged to have, convict, you know, have, have committed sexual Well, hang on. Well, that, well, that, well that, there again, you're in an interesting area, aren't you? You're saying alleged. I mean, if somebody's alleged to have done something, that well, doesn't they, mean they've, they've done it. But, but they're going to if they've been arrested, they're still going to be allowed to go into the House of Commons. Well, you can be arrested for something that you're not guilty of. Well, let me tell you this. In any other workplace in the country, that wouldn't be acceptable. I'm not sure if that's true, because I think there well, are lots no, of situations... Yeah. There are lots of situations where people are accused of things, particularly in the modern world in which we live, many people are accused of things of which they're not guilty. Well, arrested by the police, I think that's quite a high bar. Um, but it's no, it isn't bar. actually. I don't think it is. No. We've had we've had cases of Look, of of accusations yeah, made in the House of Commons. People okay. were accused of rape. They were arrested by the police. The investigation went on for three years, and then they were cleared. Are you saying to me that that was fair for that person, for that individual? No, you can't go around suspending people or firing people on something which they are not proven to be guilty of. It's about safety, isn't it? It's about people feeling safe. Well, if people don't feel safe, that's a different issue. But you can't go around, you can't go around accusing people of things they haven't done and then get people like you saying, let's get them out of the business. When the chief executive of the CBI, the director general, was accused of various offences, he was suspended and then he was eventually cleared. That's pretty much the norm. Yeah, he wasn't arrested, though, was he? For praying for it at yeah, but the he time. wasn't arrested. That's a different issue. You're talking well, about public sector that's a much workers. What I'm saying is that in, in the House of Commons, they're not going to they're going to allow MPs who've been arrested for a sexual harassment claim to still go yeah. in. Well, and there's, so, well, there's a reason for that. One of the reasons is that the particular individual, I'm not going to name him, but you probably know who it was, was cleared and was therefore found to have not been guilty in any way, shape or form. And in fact, worse than that, the accuser, the accuser was found to have been a fantasist and made it up. And, you know, so the director general of the CBI was cleared as well. Well, yeah, so, but yeah, but that's a matter for the CBI. I don't care what the CBI does. I'm not paying for them. I do care what they do in Parliament because I fund it. Well, you know, what I'm talking about more generally, you know, whether you like it or not, you know, and, and you know, is that it actually matters, the working environment. Of course know, it does. Everybody. And if people don't feel safe... I've been working in a working environment for probably as long as you, possibly longer, right? Have um, anyone... Currently, who's been arrested on your team for sexual harassment? No, nobody's been arrested that I've well, ever well, worked for. No. That were women in your team feel comfortable about that? If it was, if it was them making the allegation? Well, I don't know. But the point is, is that you shouldn't, you can't have a blanket um, arrangement, which means that if something happens, then something else happens. Everything is treated on its own merits, right? So it's not a question of whether anybody's comfortable. I think this is part of the problem that Esther McVeigh is talking about, that we have reached a stage now where if somebody makes an accusation about something because they feel in danger or because they don't feel safe, suddenly they are protected. Nobody's questioning them as to whether or not actually what they're accusing somebody of is, is right. Well, I mean, being arrested is, is, a, is a little bit further on from just... I making... don't understand what you don't know about the criminal justice system. You could be arrested for all manner of things for which you could later be released without charge. You could be arrested for all manner of things for which you later go to trial and are found innocent. So I don't know why you want to start locking people up just because somebody has made an, an accusation about them. Well, 
you know, maybe we're getting a little bit too stuck on the. On I think the, we are. I think you've 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 pretty much um, expanded on the whole reason why diversity, inclusion, um, and equity is completely over the top and mad, because you've now taken it one step further to say you want to start kicking people out of jobs because somebody doesn't feel safe. Kicking, that's not kicking people out of jobs. It's excluding them from the from the Houses of Parliament. So that's you would you would not yeah well they wouldn't be allowed to do their job if they couldn't go to the Houses of Parliament, would they? Well, look, get Andrea Leadsom on the show because she's against what that is going going. Well, through. that doesn't she's... make it right just because Andrea Leadsom agrees no. with you. Yeah, no, you get <laughs> you Andrea. know, you know, I expect she's you know, you, you know, not your kind of average person who you might think was in favour. Not my of not my kind of what. Not the person that you would think would be in favour of equality, diversity. I don't make judgments on people She's based on the, the, the party they belong to. I make judgments on people as I see them. We seem to have, we seem to have come to an end. We could do this all day. Anyway, good to talk to you. Thank you.